Hello everybody. Welcome to the calm before the storm day. That's what today is. We're going to get a boatload of snow starting this evening, moving into tomorrow. I know some of you are in for the same weather pattern. Um, some of you are living it right now. But hey, a good chunk of the country is under this latest storm that has just swept from west to east and south as well. Well, what do we do about it? Well, not much except, hey, we can look ahead to this Sunday, which is the first Sunday in Lent. Yep, Lent's here already. Be here starting Wednesday. And we can look at, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's look at the psalm, the psalm that we have. The psalm is Psalm 25. And before we actually get into just looking at it very briefly, how about we talk about how is it that People knew all these psalms. How was it that they remembered them? Because because you have to remember that they didn't have access to a lot of written literature. That would be the priests and the rabbis. They had all that stuff, but not the common people. Didn't have Bibles laying around on their coffee tables. Oh, speaking of coffee, it's not Coffee Shop Thursday, but... Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's cold out, so let's drink some coffee. So how did they know this stuff? They memorized it. Well, there's a lot of psalms to memorize. Yeah, but there's different ways to do it. One of the ways is the acrostic method. We've talked about that before, uh, especially the alphabetic acrostic in which you take the Hebrew alphabet or our English alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, work your way all the way through. And the first word of each line, the first letter of that word begins with that letter of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, all the way through to the end. Psalm 25 is a perfect example of that. It gives a little bit of help in memorizing the psalm. Also, there are other things that they do, like uh, words that repeat themselves from one verse to the other, and then the end of that verse, there's a word that repeats in the next verse, and, and at the end of that verse, there's a word that repeats in the first part of the next verse, you know, on and on and on like that. Or words that are maybe they, they sound close the same and they have the same um, root word but hey root word hey let's use that word okay root i love carrots i tell janice i'm going out the garden i'm gonna dig up some carrots i could have said i'm going out to root around for my root crop right hey same word root two different meanings though one's a verb one's more of an adjective root crop you know what kind of crop a root crop or if root crops a single thing that could be a noun you yeah you know what i'm talking about i love carrots so we have that going on all the way through this psalm 25 but a lot of the other psalms too so uh what do we have going on though here this is a psalm of lament and it's a, it's a long not a real long psalm 22 verses long and it has basically two parts to it. The first part is it's an individual bemoaning the fact that he's been a real jerk. Can I use that word? Is that all right? Well, yeah. He's been, just been an utter failure in his life uh, before God, before Yahweh. And then the second half, he bemoans the fact that, hey, my whole nation, Israel, has done the same thing. We've just made a mess of things. We're just a train wreck. Uh and right smack in the middle is verse 11. And that's not part of our scripture for this week. We're just going to do the first part, the individual part. But it's called the hinge verse. That's another thing that a lot of the Psalms use. They use hinge words or hinge verses that everything kind of centers around. And this one is, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. So what you know is going on is he's going to be talking about being guilty himself in the first part, the nation being guilty in the second half. All right. Now you might look at that and say, hey, wait a minute. Um, in that second half, he's still in the first person. Turn to me. I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart. All that sort of thing. Yeah. But you get to the very end. You see that he's talking in the first person on behalf of all of Israel because he says, redeem Israel all. Oh God, out of all its troubles. So the second half is all about Israel. The first half is all about him. But what we're going to find as you read through that, and I'm not going to do it all right now because it's lengthy, 
um, to, to doing a video clip, but you're going to see two things that emerge. One, you see the characteristics of God that make this plea, this lament to God, uh, a little bit pressing on, on God's part. Like he's, the psalmist is putting the heat on God, saying, hey, remember who you are. Uh, be mindful of your mercy, Lord. Be mindful of your hesed, your steadfast love. That word hesed, we just can't get away from it. All right, it's all through the Old Testament. And, and then there's the plea. Don't remember the sins of my youth. How? According to your steadfast love. Oh, hesed again. You know, so he's putting the pressure on saying, God, this is who you are. Please forgive me. Please wipe the slate clean. And so that's what makes it a, a, a beautiful psalm, especially for the first part of, of Lent. Um, but the other part of the psalm that's very important is that it's a psalm that focuses once again on God's word. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. When you see the words ways and paths, and all that, you're talking about God's word. You're talking about the Torah, the law of God. You know, teach me all those different verbs in there um, that that lend themselves to talking about learning of God and, and and stuff like that. That is all through this psalm, both in both parts. You know, both for me personally, but also for my nation, my people. Please, oh God, be there for us. A good way, a good way, a good psalm for the first Sunday in Lent, especially as we enter into a time of contemplating our lives before God and, and how, yeah, we, we do mess up. That's, that's what Ash Wednesday is all about, isn't it? Confessing to God that, man... We have really goofed up this time. And maybe we goof up all the time. But God, please remember us. Please love us. Forgive us. Renew us. Because here I am. I'm going to read the very first verse of this psalm. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. That is the language of sacrifice. Lift up is what's used throughout the Old Testament as people were making their sacrifices to God in the temple. Hmm. The Apostle Paul says something about that too. Present yourselves as a living sacrifice to God. We just had that scripture passage not too long ago in church. Well, God's blessings be with you. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the coming snow. <laughs> I know up in our area, we haven't had a whole lot of it yet this year. Uh, here and there, bits and pieces. But get ready. It's coming. And it's going to be fun, too. God's blessings be with you.